hi welcome to another video of microprocessor course so in the last video i have introduced the fundamental elements of microprocessor so we have seen that microprocessor can be interpreted as a um, as a uh, central processing unit or CPU of a microcomputer and it is interesting that followed by the invention of microprocessor the microcontroller based um, microcontrollers quickly came into the market and these terms this microprocessor and microcontroller have always been confused with each other okay both of them has been have been designed for real-time applications and they share many common features and at the same time they have some significant differences so in this video I will discuss the basic similarities and dissimilarities of, uh, of microprocessors and uh, maybe dissimilarities between these two that is up or uh, microprocessor and and microcontroller and apart from this I will also touch upon the basic idea behind the system and chip or SOC which is which is a very com a common word in, in in modern era okay so basically if we look at the microprocessor and microcontroller we can see that both are basically IC or integrated circuit okay so if we take one popular microcontroller a uh, microprocessor suppose 8085 designed by Intel and another microcontroller 8051 which is also designed by Intel then we cannot uh, visually we cannot distinguish them because by just looking at them we cannot distinguish because both are looks alike because they are IC right and when you know that there are different versions of microprocessors and microcontroller and which having different number of pins suppose starting from 6 pin to 80 to 100 pins or even higher depending on the features okay so it is not possible to uh, differentiate the microprocessor and microcontroller by just looking at their RC unless we check the description on the written on the mm, written on the IC so to actually to find out the difference between these two uh, the basic difference between this microprocessor and microcontroller we have to dig into the basic internal architecture and we already know that the microcomputer the term microcomputer that microcomputer is basically our all the personal computer that we use the desktop notebook and the laptop and microcomputer basically contains a microprocessor in it and which is a central processing unit of the microcomputer and also it has um, it, it has a uh, display unit uh, is it has input interface and a output interface that is display and keyboard and also also we have the external ROM, RAM and input output units. So basically microprocessor is a IC which is a central processing unit of a microcomputer and microprocessor mainly contains the three things that arithmetic logical unit, control logic and the register right and but a microprocessor does not contain any don't have contain any RAM that is random access memory or read only memory ROM and any other peripherals on the ch on its chip on the chip okay so a system designer has to add this RAM ROM and other peripherals to they, they have to add them externally to make make the whole thing functional and that is what we call assembling also right so but if in case of Micro, microcontroller if we look at the architecture the, um, the internal architecture of a microcontroller uh, we can see that microcontroller contains a CPU central processing unit that is basically the processor and 
uh, processor of the microcontroller and also it contains a limited amount of RAM or fixed amount of RAM and ROM. It has own IO ports and it has its interrupt controller, serial communication ports, timer and counter and so everything is included within the microcontroller. So it is kind of a mini system, mini computer on a single chip and even we can interface the analog signal with the with the microcontroller by uh, because it already has an inbuilt analog to digital converter and similarly it has after processing you can give the output via a digital to analog convert converter okay so microcontroller is as a whole it is a system with limited post processing power because it, its cpu is not very strong enough as such the microprocessor has but it has a processor that is a central but it has a limited amount of memory also and it has I input I, I input uh, io ports and all the all the things is, is actually embedded on a on a single chip or silicon die okay so basically the question next question comes so if we have microprocessor already in our hand so why we are bothered about a microcontroller why should I, a microcontroller is required so microcontroller basically are programmed to perform a specific task okay so so microcontroller basically uh, program to perform a specific task so what i mean by specific task is that that specific means the application where the relationship of input and output is quite uh, well defined so depending on the input some processing needs to be done and output is delivered for example the the washing machine that we use in our household or micro microwave oven digital camera this all are basically our embedded system because they have a specific task to do and their application are very very specific and they need very small resources ram rom and io ports and hence we can we can use a microcontroller to um, to program such a way that they will perform that specific task so and also that the the, the, uh, the requirement for for a uh, for uh, their requirement for for their small resources can be so small resources can be also fulfilled by using a microcontroller okay so sometimes microcontrollers for complex tasks or complex system the microcontroller also requires real time operating system to manage the overall process okay whereas the microprocessor the micro uh, microprocessor uh, microprocessor find applications where the tasks are very unspecific so they are more general they, they have a very general purpose usage so like development uh, so like developing a software playing games browsing websites photo editing creating documents so so these tasks are in the very where well, this task we can see at the input and output is not very well defined so this requires this this whole task is requires very large amount of resources like ram rom io ports everything <coughs> it's it's quite quite huge amount of resource we require so that's why we that that is actually that's why we actually prefer sometime the the computer system and in that case we need a microprocessor and then we have to assemble assemble the other things so we have to set up other things the ram rom tire ports and then that would be functional that would be actually functional okay and mm, other thing is that so this is actually the difference between the mm, difference between the microcontroller and microprocessor from the from the point of view of applications now if we look at the other aspects that that is the clock speed in microcontroller the clock frequency is is is, is not 
so high, so much high compared to the microprocessor. So microcontroller clock speed is generally is 30 to 50 megahertz in this range. So in the megahertz range, whereas microprocessor works in gigahertz range. So we can know we know that in modern i7, i5, i7 processor, it's it works around um, it works at a speed around um, two to three gigahertz. Okay. And another thing is that microcontroller are are quite cheaper, far cheaper than a microprocessor, and micro um, microprocessor is quite costly. Okay, so but we cannot um, replace the work of a microprocessor by a microcontroller, and we we should not use the uh, microcontroller instead of microprocessor. Uh, or we cannot use a microprocessor instead of microcontroller because in that case we don't need that resource for a specific task we didn't need a general purpose processor we just need a very small amount uh, it is it is a very, very dedicated uh, system uh, system on chip or the where where everything is included but the limitation of microcontroller is that it has a very a small amount of resources the RAM, ROM, and its processing power is also also quite limited. Okay, so this is the basically basic difference between the microcontroller and microprocessor in the in various aspect we have de uh, described that we have the what is the difference in their internal architecture, what is the difference in their applications, and what are the clock speed, uh, what is the, how we can compare the clock speed. And, um, and processing speed and this all things we have discussed here. So last thing that I would to like to cover here is that that is system on chip, the bars of the system and chip and I will try to explain the system on chip or SOC which is a very common word in modern smartphone era. Okay, so basically what I would like to say that uh, micro Micro, uh, microcontrollers are firstly used for various embedded system applications that I told you all uh, already but but they are not very powerful enough for for to run advanced applications that use demand in the modern era okay so as a technology and the uh, technology in DSP, particularly digital signal processing and machine learning or AI has been advanced uh, in recent uh, uh, recent time so drastically that we want to have we want to have um, we want to have uh, um, have a device with various applications such as our our smartphone should uh, support the processing for good quality camera bluetooth speech enhancement and ai assisted fancy applications so all should be supported in a small device so basically now the system requires to run very complex very very complex and mathematically intensive operations such as speech coding channel coding image processing this algorithm has to be has to run has to be done on the on on a, on a small system. So we want complexity in our system as well as we want to shrink the size of the overall system. So so as a consequence, all this demands a technology where we can integrate the digital signal processing cores along with the the regular CPU cores. And with an increased, with an increased, um, uh, increased amount of RAM and ROM, and this actually gave rise to the concept of system on chip or SOC. Okay, so SOC is also IC. So you can, so SOC is just like microcontroller and microprocessor. They are also IC, but that integrates almost everything uh, of computer and um, what components of computer. So here all I can say that mass production and extreme integration by various tech companies in last uh, last decade, but particularly uh, actually um, um, last decade by various tech companies has helped to reduce the cost of SOC. Okay, so 
As a result, devices like Raspberry Pi would have been designed and offered to the common people very cheaply. So, if you, I think you all familiar with this term, the Raspberry Pi, which is a SOC based single single board computer, low cost, low cost single board computer, and so it it can run a full full blown desktop OS. It can run a desktop OS. Cyrus, uh, even Linux it can run and and it can display the output on a monitor via, via HDMI cable so basically the Raspberry Pi has uh, ha, have, have been possible could have could not be have been possible be, uh, could have been uh, built could have been, uh, could not have been built without the existence of very cheap SOC okay so and everything in raspberry pi is integrated into a broadcom soc that uh, uh, that is bm2835 the name of the soc is bm2835 so basically that is the heart of the the raspberry pi the pm bcm2835 and basically this 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 broadcom system is a uh, broadcom system is a, a system on chip is a integrated circuit which integrates the arm compatible central processing unit with graphic processing unit so we can understand that this this high level of integration has enables to achieve more task or more complexity uh, on a on a s small chip okay and that is the actually the demands of the modern era where where we needs emer, em, enormous amount of applications to run simultaneously okay so basically that is the uh, as a whole the discussion it was like this way so as a nutshell we can on a nutshell we can say that the microprocessor basically the cpu of micro uh, microcomputer and microcontroller with real-time operating system are basically used for different embedded system applications and a new level of integration of digital signal processing uh, cores with regular CPU cores has give rise to a new technology that is called the system on chip which 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 supports more advanced applications in in the, in this modern era where we are all uh, using a smartphones in our in our life okay so basically so this is my hmm, so this is this was what i would like to discuss in my in this video so if you have any doubt you can ask me question in the comment box or otherwise you just um, okay so thank you for watching and i would like to have your feedback okay thank you thank you very much